Hey guys, good to see you again. Welcome back to the garage. Well, I'm finally about ready to put this engine back in that 1994 Saab 900 because I finally got the stupid little piece of wire I needed so I can show you how to install the clutch. This is your clutch pressure plate and this stupid little silver strip of wire specially shaped just for the job is what I needed to be able to get this clutch back in the car. Its job is to depress or retract the fingers on this pressure plate so that you have enough room to slip it all back into the transmission housing. So I'll show you that in a second, but let me explain how all this works. So this is the friction disc. This is your clutch disc itself. This is what wears out and, and causes your clutch to slip and eventually you need to change it. So it goes against the flywheel on the car behind this pressure plate. So it's the pressure of these springs forcing this disc into the flywheel is what holds everything together. Then comes this throwout bearing which goes against these fingers right here. It rotates and allows that to spin. And then this is your slave cylinder that presses it all together. So when you step on your clutch pedal, this inner cylinder of the slave extends and presses against the fingers, releasing the pressure on the clutch disc so you can disengage the engine from the drivetrain. All of that makes sense to you? Let's put it all together. Saab engineers did a lot of things differently, and one of them was to put the clutch right up here in the front of the engine. It's one of the few cars I know of where you can actually change the clutch without uh, having to remove the transmission. However, the space that you have to work in here, well, that's very limited. So it makes that retaining spring, that spacer spring I mentioned just a moment ago, man, that thing is vital. I tried several other things, and without it, it's just not going to work. So again, here is your clutch disc. It's marked, it tells you which side goes against the flywheel. So I'm just gonna sort of gently slide that into place. Now what I found is it's best, for me at least, if you use a zip tie to hold the uh, throw out bearing against the slave cylinder, and it's still a tight fit. Uh, and if you have to manipulate it just right, and you can get this in. Now there are some pins back there some dowel pins. All right, I think that's going to go. Okay, it's in far enough now that we can cut away this zip strip. Pull that out of there. Now I can move ahead and get this slave cylinder seated in place, I hope. This clutch shaft is critical to the operation. So it goes right through the center of your clutch assembly and the splines here capture the rotating force of your engine and the flywheel and spin this shaft. And the splines on this end transfer that energy through a gear set here down and back to actually activate your gears. So it's a little fussy to get this lined up but not difficult to do. Just uh, some grease on the end of the splines is good practice, called for in the Bentley manual. Uh, you want to make sure that the pilot bearing on your flywheel is in good shape. And uh, mine was changed, so I know that one's okay. So it's got to go through the center of the clutch disc, and I find the best thing to do is to uh, get your pressure plate in place and just kind of hold it there with one bolt. Okay, that guy started now. There we go. And after you've been threaded this little uh, plastic impeller into the end of the uh, shaft itself, your end cap goes in place. It's got little tabs that can only go one way. And a little retaining spring holds it all together. 
Now obviously that's a job that's much easier to do when the engine's out of the car. There is one more step I need to show you along the way and that is you need to bleed the clutch and we shot a video on that some time ago showed you how to do it using a, uh, a compressor and, and a power bleeder and uh, you can find that. I'll link it up below. But as you can see the car is back together. I'm cleaning off about Oh, I don't know, 500 miles worth of grit and grime. So we've uh, been on the road for a little while with this rebuild engine. Uh, what did I learn along the way and uh, how's it running today? We'll catch up with you on that in our next video, right? Okay, well, get out in the garage, get yourselves dirty. I'll see you next time.